Hey guys, so this video, my friend Josh Williams is gonna go through a type of training we both like to do called active drilling. So a lot of times you learn a technique and you drill it, but sometimes it's a little bit different when you switch into sparring. And sometimes trying to learn a technique during sparring can be really difficult because your opponent is resisting so much. So this active drilling method of training is a really useful way to be able to bridge that gap to get to the next level in your technique. All right, so now we're gonna go to the mat with Josh. And guys, remember, if you wanna support the channel, the best way to help is like and leave a comment. Thanks a lot. Okay, so what is active drilling to start with? Active drilling for me is the bridge between basically uh, technique and sparring. So we think about your technique as a passive, non-resistive thing, and then you have sparring. This is the bridge between the two things. So. First of all, you have to learn technique to start. So you can't just active drill, you can't just spar, you have to do proper technique and be taught technique. But you can learn this from instructional, it doesn't matter. Obviously, John's got plenty on his YouTube channel you can, you can look at and learn from. So you can learn a technique. But then active drilling is how you put that technique from a passive technique into actual sparring. So I'm gonna use uh, back control today, for example. Back control is one of the easiest ones, I think, to start because it's one of the topics that most people understand. So let's say I'm on John's back, I've got one hook in. So this would be a standard back attack in position. Now, a standard technique John will probably use to get out of this is to clear my bottom hook and then hip out. So this is such a standard technique. Now, you could then obviously go through the long process with an instructor, bear in mind if, if they are teaching this topic at that time, of how then I might go to mount or how if I come up, I get like half guard or whatever position I end up in. Or, you can start to act the drill list with a partner where you can start to come up with problems and solutions yourself without the need for your coach to ABC teach you, okay? So we can start at 0% or 10%, for example. So I'm on John's back. He allows me to put one hook in, we start. Okay, so I think, right, common things happening to me all the time in sparring is my partner is clearing my bottom hook, for example, and then they're hipping out. Okay, so this happens. Now we can do this super passive to start. So I can just sit here with John now and think, okay, what is the next logical thing I could do? And I might think, okay, best thing to do, come up to side control. No problem, that is a good response to the problem, uh, but doesn't now allow me to retake the back or continue my back attack in sequence. So I might think, okay, I want to try and be a bit more uh, assertive and get to another scoring position. So I'm in the exact same scenario. I think, okay, well this time, I'll throw my leg over and I'll drive to mount. This could be another great option. But then, if you were to start to spar this, and I know that, for example, this would happen. If I was with John and he did a hip out and I did this to drive to mount, he's always going to do this, yeah? And that's the problem with passive technique, is when you do it in passive technique, you do this, you get to mount, you think, oh, technique works. But reality is, is if I did this in sparring, John would defend, and I might end up in his half guard, okay? But that's how you start developing your active drilling, by doing a set technique. And then John allows me to start doing my reactions, and then over time I'd ask him to increase his reactions. So for example, recovery of the half guard. So we can then work off of that. So I could do another sequence, I'm on the back, he clears the bottom hook, he's always going to do this, he hips out, excellent, I throw this over, I start to come up, where's he going to go? Half guard. This is always going to happen. And then if we're actively drilling this as opposed to just doing uh, technique, I could then think, okay, the next thing I might try and do, drive up the top, and I might just sit and hold position. From here and I can think, well, what is the next logical thing? I could retake the back, so I could go chest it, and try and reattack the back. I could end up in the exact same problem I just had, where John peels my hook out again, and hips out again. So then, from that sequence, I would think, well, how can I actually just stop that technique? Because he's hit that on me twice now, so obviously that is the problem, yeah? So, you can do it at this pace. So this is how I would start active drilling. So I'd start at, like, 10% where I'm doing something, John does a reaction, almost like a game of chess where we're taking a turn for turn. Uh, and this way what will actually happen is you can then take your technique from a technical non-resistive place to actually to a place where you are sparring or almost sparring. So in our active drilling, 
what we'd often then start doing, that would be the start in sequence where I'd think, okay, I start in the back, John's gonna hip out, okay, what am I gonna do next? Then we start bringing in rules. So our rules for our active drilling is one person is active drilling at a time. So only one of us is drilling and the other person is just being a good partner for that person to drill on. That means that in this scenario, I would always win. So I always have to win. So I always have to get back to the back if that's my goal or back half guard or wherever my goal is, I'm always going to achieve that. But John is gonna put obstacles in place to stop me from getting it only to the extent of which I can beat and I can eventually take the back, if hopefully that makes sense, okay? So I'll try and give you um, a, a, more a better example now of how we can do this. Okay, so if we take that sequence, the first instance, John escaped, okay, he allowed me then to go up towards mount and then do a chair set. But the second time he escaped, he could have fully escaped and started to recover his guard. But what he did instead was start to turn his back towards me a second time to allow me again to recover the back. And then I was able to get the back half guard and stop the sequence because he couldn't do his hip out escape. So that's like one very, very small example of active drilling. Now we can increase that resistance. We could do that at 90%. As long as both partners understand, my goal is to get to the back half guard. John's goal is just to give me options and resistance. Now obviously the higher the belt level, the easier this becomes because we know more options. So for beginners, you want to keep to a simple sequence to start with and add on to that sequence. A higher level, a uh, black belt, brown belt, you can do anything you want to do as long as you were trying objectively to learn and to get to the same position every single time to understand what mistakes you're making. So in the sequence then, John did a second hip out. I went to throw my leg over, his knees were too tight, so I had to settle to go to knee on belly. But that means that in the future now I can think on that and think, well, why did that not happen? And what could I do the next time to stop that from happening again? Hopefully that makes sense for him, okay? So one extra thought I wanted to add in with that is uh, if you're lower level, you know, you can't always get a training partner to do this kind of stuff with because maybe they don't give you time in your gym or whatever, right? So um, when you start doing this, you know, you're somewhat limited by the, uh, as he said, the options your opponent gives back to you. So say you're both white belts or blue belts. Uh, when you go into the gym and you do your normal rolling, if there's someone who's higher level or just someone who gets a different response than your partner does, when you get into that position in a normal match, try to memorize those and the next time you get with your partner and you're in whatever sequence, you can teach them the, the response that you were getting in the real match. And that's often how uh, I like to train, I think that's like how you guys train, is I use the regular hard sparring as kind of like a feedback loop to show me responses I need to work on, and then I add those back into my resistance drilling or my specific sparring so that I can prepare. Because you can't always get this kind of specific training with every person you want, so you need to have a good relationship with your partner to try to build and work on the responses that you need. All right guys, hope you liked the video. If you guys have any questions about this type of training, go ahead and leave a comment and let us know. And as always, if you like the channel, like, share, subscribe. Thanks a lot.